So welcome to Homeschooling 101. This is my parents' guide for pre-K to five kids, uh, pre-K to five students. And um, I'm hoping this will just be a good resource for you. It's got some great tech tips in here, but it's also got some strategies in terms of homeschooling. Um, and as I said before, for those of you who just joined, Joe will be mediating the chat. If you have any questions, you can just throw it in there. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Tracy Cummings McGreal, and I'm the administrator here at the ADP Center. So I'm a working parent, just like you guys, and I have kids. I don't know if you recognize these four kids. Um, they're dressed up like the crew from Schitt's Creek, which I thought was kind of funny. So I just thought I'd put a little humor in there. But these are my actual kids. They're um, Charlotte's in sixth grade, and Emma's a sophomore in high school. So I've, I know the drill with K to five. I've been through it. So hopefully I can um, give you guys some information regarding that. So one of the first things I want to say is everyone's kind of expected to just carry on as usual, but we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And I think we really need to remind ourselves of that. We need to be patient with ourselves. Um, you know, for the most part, we're not professional teachers and our kids might be angels at school for them. Um, but of course, our kids are really comfortable at home and that makes homeschooling that much harder because they can, um, because they feel comfortable with us. And because of all the stress and frustration that's still evident, like parents and kids really feel that. So anyone that has a kid under 10, I have a lot of empathy for you because I know like you can't pour from an empty cup and you really have to take care of yourself first, but that's so hard to do in this situation. So let's move on to the next slide. And how are we parents handling it, right? <laughs> I, I saw this quote the other day. You can either have a nice evening at home or you can help your child with their math homework and you can have both. So this really resonated with me because as all of you know, um, the way that children do math now is completely different than how we did it as, when we were learning. Um, so, <laughs> What I, want, what I wanted to mention is, whoops, strive for progress, not perfection. Um, the first thing is keep in touch frequently with your child's teacher. With a lot of the teachers that I interviewed for this particular workshop, the teachers actually want to hear from you. They wanna know what's going on with your kids and they kinda of wanna know what's going on with you. So like if, you are t if you're working from home, they need to know that you can't be there all day to sit with them and do and work on their homework or be there for Zoom calls. So I think what's really important is to negotiate with them. Say to them, listen, um, you know, I'm working from home. I don't have time to sit there with my, my son or my daughter. What's the most important assignment for my kid to complete today? Because they will be willing to work with you. I mean, even though like we're expected to return to this normal, it, it's, it's really almost impossible if you're a parent right now. I think one of the best modes of support is to create a Facebook Messenger parent group. I have one. Um, I use it for resource, for to utilize as a sounding board, um, for support. You might not have that where, like if you don't know a lot of the parents in your town, contact the teacher, contact the principal. Say that you're interested in like creating a network of parents um, so that you know you can have that support for yourselves. I think it's really, really important. Um, the other thing too is creating this book, this uh, messenger group, is also important for setting up a virtual play date. Or if you're comfortable having like meeting a parent with their child at the park, or somewhere outside where you might feel comfortable, because you know kids and and we also need these social outlets. Um, and you know just do what works for you, for, for your family. Another thing I'd like to stress is do yourself a favor and try to refrain from social media. Um, you don't want to compare yourself with what other parents are doing necessarily because a lot of people just boast about themselves on social media. It's not really a realistic objective. So we don't want to, a lot of times when we view too many of those, um, you know, feeds on social media, like we end up feeling bad. So treat yourself and, <laughs> and try to limit your social media. Okay, so words to the wise. I love this quote, creativity, imagination, and curiosity bloom in boredom. Sometimes the best ideas and the most creative ideas you'll get is when you're peeling potatoes, right? <laughs> um, so it's really important to have device-free time. 
listen, if you're on a work call and you need your child to sit there for an hour on a device and, you know, that's okay. You might need to do that. But I think, you know, communication is really important. So one thing you can do is have a family meeting. Um, you know, experts can't tell us particularly how to do it right. All we can do is try to do our best. And we need to set real expe realistic expectations. Um, so, you know, have a family meeting, maybe talk about having different responsibilities in the house. You know, while, while I'm on this call, you can make dinner or you can give certain responsibilities to your children. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is um, stay away from micromanaging your kid. I think while we're all at home, it's easy to, you know, kind of be helicopter parents. And because of that, that the research shows that that limits kids ability to like, for, for just decision making. And um, it gives them a sense of defeat that they can't really do things on their own without their parents. So just to give you an example, when my daughter was little, um, she was being a little too reliant on me. And what I did was I said, you're gonna get your breakfast in the morning. So I got the cereal down and left it on the counter. I left the bowls on the counter and I poured the milk in a pitcher because she couldn't pour it herself. It was too heavy. I put it in a little pitcher in the fridge on a lower shelf. And in the morning she would get the spoon out of the drawer and make her cereal. This is how she, it, not only, you know, sh she developed confidence in learning how to get it for herself. And it was something that she could do independently. So I think it's really important that, um, you know, we start to, to do that. Another thing that I recently started doing is we started cleaning as a family. Like, I know it sounds kind of corny, but it's actually really great because what we decided was like, okay, we'll take one hour and clean the kitchen. And everybody in the family was working in the kitchen to clean it. And it was great because we had conversation and we all worked together. And by the end of the hour, it was all clean. And it was like, you know, four hours worth of cleaning. Now, if your kids are really little, they might not be able to do as good of a job as older kids, but I think it's a great, uh, way for kids to learn and, um, you know, take some responsibility, which I think is great. So let's get into our tech tips and tech tips and technology resources for um, pre-K to first. Now, when I interviewed a kindergarten teacher, she said the most important thing that she wants her students to learn in her class is independence and comfortable making decisions, be comfortable making decisions and mistakes. Uh, she wasn't saying that they could write their name or that they could, you know, do a simple math problem or read. I thought it was really interesting that that was the most important thing that she felt kids should learn. Um, another thing that is important is to give kids ample breaks. Like we know teachers, they schedule breaks throughout their day with the kids. And sometimes that break might be not just sitting, like they get up from their chair and they move over to the carpet. So kids are constantly moving and they're taking these little breaks in between that so that they can kind of like reset themselves and be ready for the next experience. Um, the other thing too is at this particular age, experiences are better than technology. But like I said, this is not a typical time. So if you need to give them, if they, if they love um, technology, give them a learning experience that way with one of these great apps. Um, another thing I love is to use timers. Now, I remember when someone told me to do this, I thought it was like silly, but it works. The two great things about using a timer is number one, it helps kids with pacing. And the second thing is it helps them um, because be, be more self-directed because kids at this age are not very self-directed. And the third thing is, is you're not the bad guy. And like I said, I did not think that that would be the case, but you set a timer for 20 minutes and say, okay, you're gonna read this for 20 minutes. You put the timer on and when it's over, they're done. So they know they can move on to the next thing. And that's where, you know, being self-directed comes in. But if you also put on the timer and say, you have 20 more minutes on your device and the timer goes off, and you could say, okay, the timer went off, your device time is over. They're much less likely to give you a hard time than if you just said, sorry, honey, your time is up. I gave you 20 minutes. The timer actually really works. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say before going over the apps is give your kids their own space. If you have room in your house to like, let's say 
put your child at the dining room table or at their desk when they're doing their work for the day, that's great. So that they're not like doing all their homework at the kitchen table and then eating their dinner at the kitchen table. So if, if they're able to have their own space so they could switch from like perhaps meal time um, and their work time, that would be really helpful. So let's get into these great apps. Whoops. So the first one I want to mention is Teacher Monster to Read. It's a free app. If um, it, it's, it's free on the computer, but if you wanted to download the app, I think it's $2.99. But what's great about this um, app is that it helps kids learn how to read and it's completely done in a gamified way. Um, I know some siblings that play it. They're actually competitive about getting stars, but they love it because it's a game. So it's a great way to introduce kids to reading. Um, the second one I want to chat about is Scratch Junior. This, was, this is like a pre-coding program that was created by MIT and basically kids can log on, five-year-olds uh, and up, and they can learn to actually code. It's really brilliant. Um, if you look to the right, there's the choice board that you can find on print Pinterest. And those are great because they're different little activities that children can choose from. So, you know, kids like going on and selecting like five fine green, five, find five green things or count 10 pennies. So it's, you know, it's good for little kids and it gives them a little break. Um, Epic, you could see in the lower left hand corner. That's a really great, great um, website. They have so many books. They have books in uh, Spanish, and they are all your favorite books from when you were a kid, um, and all the ki the books that kids are into now. So you can look at the books. Um, a lot of schools use these, or if your school doesn't use Epic, um, you can see what other um, online um, resource they have for this. But they're great because they. You can actually choose for the book to be read aloud to your child and it's not in a robotic voice. So if they have to do some reading, you can have the book read to them, which is great. So that's why I really love Epic. Um, and the last one I wanted to mention is Go Noodle. Go Noodle is an app that many school districts use. It is free online. Um, and what's great about this app is it gets kids moving. It gives them different um, like movable activities that are like maybe five minutes or you know 10 or 15 minutes and they're all different there's nfl play 60 there's a yoga one as you could see like there's dancing it's there's a lot of different ones so it appeals to kids who like all different things so it's not just one thing which i like so moving on to second and third grade does your child need complete quiet or do they like a little background noise this might might be different. My kids are complete opposites. My one needs a little background noise and the other one needs complete quiet. So you might want to be mindful of setting up that type of um, environment for your child. Um, create, create a staggered work ske uh, schedule with multiple kids. So, you know, if you have a lot, like a few kids, even with, if, if you're in hybrid learning or um, like the way my school works is, my one daughter goes in four days a week in the morning and my other daughter goes in every other week. So you might have to create a staggered schedule in which you know, you're going to help them with like their work. I think one of the best things is if you have any older kids to help the younger kids because um, it creates responsibility and empathy. It's a great skill to learn for them. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is when is your child's most productive time? Of course, you know, with online school, they're going to have to log in in the morning. Um, but I'm guessing that, you know, and we can chat about this later, but you probably, your kids are probably on a Zoom or a Google Meet for part of the day and then they break. So, um, you know, maybe during the afternoon they have to do their homework. But my point is that your kids might need to take a longer break because maybe your child needs, to, like after all that online, those online calls in the morning, they might need like an hour of play time, not like 30 minute lunch and go right back to work. They might need that little bit of a break. So let's go over these resources in the next slide. So one of my favorite is Flipgrid. And the reason why I love Flipgrid is because not only is it free, you could download it on anything, but what it is, is it's basically you're making a small video 
of yourself. Um, and what's great about that is not only can families make these videos and send them to each other, so it's like a way of being connected, but I think the best thing is, the best way to learn something is to teach it to somebody else. So your kids can utilize this application to talk about a story they read or explain um, you know, something from social studies or something from science so that they really have a better or deeper understanding of it. So I think this is a great way to, um, a great way to do that. So the other one I want to look at is Brain Pop Junior. Brain Pop Junior is one of those scalable apps. It's scalable up and down. Now many of these, like Brain Pop, Seesaw, um, Moby Max, all these different um, apps and, and websites educators use. I'm sure your district is using one. Um, I My kids particularly like this one. Not only does it have a, a colorful interface, but it's got a lot of great uh, different not only does it have math, science, um, and reading, but it has health, it has art, it has music. So it's got a lot of cool things on it. And it's done in just a fun way for kids. Um, and the last one I wanted to mention is Mystery Science. The great thing about Mystery Science is that they are lessons that are divided up by, by grade bands. So like, you know, K to two, or at like three to four, something like that. So it'll be like in line with whatever their age is. And it answers all kinds of questions, um, you know, that kids like ha that they have questions about, like why does a chameleon change color? Um, you know, why is the sky blue? Things of that nature. So kids love that. It's And it's something, you know, fun and interesting for them to do other than just their regular, their regular work. Okay, so tech tips and resources for fourth and fifth grades. I think one of the most important things to do at this age is have kids collaborate on their homework. Um, if you think about what professors do at universities now, part of the learning comes from the other students in the class. The, the professor will talk about something and then, you know, students respond to it on a discussion post and then they learn from what the other students have to say about it. This is kind of the same thing that kids are doing at this particular age. They're capable of doing it then. So um, I highly recommend like during COVID last year, like last school year, my daughter would collaborate my fifth grader a lot with other kids. Because the other thing too is like, I didn't have time to sit there and figure out uh, some of the math problems. And I want them to get have agency. Uh, so, and we'll discuss the, the app in the next slide. As our kids get older, observe how they work best. Um, I kind of mentioned that before with what time works for them. Like I know my daughter, my one daughter gets everything done and the other one takes all day to get it done. But I think a lot of times we as parents think like you want them to do it a certain way. But I think it's best like my, my other daughter that takes all day to do her homework is happy because she does it in her, she takes ample breaks and gets it done whereas my other daughter just wants to bang it out so she could do something else, but everybody's different. I think the other thing that's really important at this age is to know that they may be more dependent, but they may require more emotional support, especially that they understand even more about what's going on, um, it being a stressful time. So let's discuss the apps here on the next slide, whoops. Okay, so one of my favorite math apps is photo math. I don't know if you've used photo math yet, but it's brilliant because you can take a picture of the math problem with your phone and it shows you different ways to do it. And it shows you the ways that, um, you know, according to the common core, they're supposed to be completed. So I highly, I highly recommend this app um, because, you know, we just learned in different way than our kids are. So this really helps. I think Khan Academy also, which is in the lower right-hand quadrant, um, that's also a mainstay for math. It explains a lot of things. They have a lot of great videos on YouTube. Um, the other apps that I want to mention, quizzes. A lot of schools use this app as well, but you can download this one for free as well. This is a gamified quiz. So this is really geared more toward the older kids. Um, but basically, kids go in and make up their own quizzes. 
Now, I, I, I thought it was ridiculous. I thought my, ch my daughter would hate this, but she thought it was incredible. And so did all the other kids in her class. So they make up these quizzes and basically what they're doing is they're going back into the text to look for answers. So they're actually deepening their learning as they're doing it, which is pretty smart. Um, the other one that I wanna mention is Science Mom. This was started by a scientist. She, uh, I don't know, she got the idea to do this because I guess she really enjoys conducting experiments. And it was, you know, a big hit. And then she asked her husband to join her, who's math dad. And they've been doing these series of competitions and um, science experiments. So if you have, you know, some time where your kids want to do something else, they can do, you know, watch some of these. They had a huge quarantine series, which was really, really amazing and fun, you know, for kids to watch. So special subjects. Um, the one thing I do want to mention about special subjects is that I think they're really important as an outlet for this age group, uh, K, you know, pre-K to five. Kids express themselves in different ways. And I think art, music um, are great ways to do that. I don't think you should put undue pressure on yourself to complete projects, especially if your kids are struggling to complete like math, reading, writing assignments. Um, just send the teach, send your library teacher an email and just say, look, like I can't, com you know, I can't complete this. It's just something to keep in mind um, because I remember some teachers do expect you to function like, you know, it's just business as usual and, it, and it's just not right now. So I just wanted to mention that. But in terms of special subjects, um, some of my favorite apps for that is GarageBand and Tenuto. Unfortunately, they are only available on iOS. But GarageBand is amazing. They can create all kinds of music using the app. And Tenuto, I know a lot of fourth and fifth graders begin learning an instrument at this time. And what's great about Tenuto is it's basically just a game where, you know, it'll illuminate a note on the music staff and you'll hear the sound and then you need to choose which note it is. Um, and they learn how to read music that way. I've used it to increase my knowledge of, you know, the, the bass, the bass, uh, the bass clef. For some reason, like it's a diff it's different when you play piano, which I didn't know until I started learning, but it's really great for them to learn music. So for languages, I recommend Duolingo and Rosetta Stone. I specifically like Duolingo because it's got like a fun interface and it's got the cute little owl. But what's really interesting about Duolingo is not only can you learn Spanish or French or Mandarin, but you can also learn very obscure languages like Navajo and, uh, and Gaelic, which, is, which I think is fantastic. And if you are a Spanish speaker, a native Spanish speaker, you can learn how to speak like that could be the primary language and you could learn to speak many other languages from Spanish, which I thought was great. Rosetta, Rosetta Stone, same thing. Um, they also have tutoring th through Rosetta Stone. It's been free, but they, they, might, they might have started to charge. Um, but I just wanted to mention that because that's like such a great, whoops, um, a great tool. Uh, the two art ones that I wanted to mention is Prisma. Prisma is an app that you can download on either iOS or Android. And basically, kids can take filters and put them on different photographs that they have or that on the iPad or that you have on your phone. Um, and some of them are just like wild and crazy and cute and fun. And it's just something they like to do. The other one that I really love is Art, Hub, uh, art for Kids Hub. And this is basically a family. You would subscribe to their YouTube channel go on YouTube, check it out. So basically they show kids how to uh, create art from rudimentary shapes. So instead of just try teaching them how to draw a unicorn, they'll start out with the shapes and then eventually shape it into the unicorn. And what's great is every single member of their family participates. So it's not just an adult drawing the picture and your kid wonders why it doesn't turn out looking like you know, like an artist drew it. But I mean, honestly, your kids will come up with some amazing stuff. It's really, really good. I, I love it. Okay, so this is the one thing I really wanted to chat with you all about. Um, parent tech helpers. Now, I don't know if you guys have had any issues navigating um, Google Meets or Zoom. 
Uh, but these little uh, tech helpers can help us with help our kids to have better um, success with online school. So the first app I want to talk about is Otter. Otter is um, like a virtual assistant and it converts live speaking into a written, written, written transcript. Basically, so if, if you needed to listen to what your, your child was, you know, your teacher was giving a homework assignment, you could use your phone to record what she's saying. Um, and I have to say, not only does it record in real time, but it actually works, you know, pretty stellarly. The, tr the, trans the transcription is like spot on. The only time like it's a little iffy is if like two people are talking at the same time or the teacher is using like proper names that it doesn't recognize. But what's great about it is when you go back through the transcription, it saves the audio as well. So if you highlight a word and you're like, that doesn't look right, you can click on the audio and it'll be right there in that part of the transcript. So you'll know what was said, which is great. But the other thing that I really love about Otter is kids that are really young don't write very quickly. So if they're trying to come up with ideas for the, like their writing assignments or maybe if, if um, your child has dyslexia, it's good for them to speak their thoughts into Otter, which converts it into the transcription. And then they can look at it and say, oh, OK, you know, I'm thinking about writing about wolves or, you know, whatever their thoughts are for that. So I definitely like Otter um, in that respect for kids. The other thing I want to talk about is Chrome extensions. I'm sure a lot of you use the Chrome browser. So there are Chrome extensions to help. Um, one is Screencastify. So you can actually use a screen recorder for Chrome um, and it records audio and video. So if, but the only caveat is it only records for five minutes. So it's something that you'd have to record quickly. Otherwise you have to upgrade. Um, Cami, that is great because if you have younger kids and your teacher gives you worksheets that are PDFs, you can actually annotate on the PDF and use the turn in function because otherwise you'd have to print it out, have your kid write on the, PD, on the, the worksheet take a picture of it and then and then submit it, which is too many steps. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is the Google Meet extension grid. If your kids are meeting on Google Meet, they can't see everyone in their class unless they download the Chrome extension, uh, Google Meet extension grid, which I'll show you on the next screen. So here we see Screencastify. What happens when you download at the end of the space bar, there will be a little icon and that's the icon when you click it, Screencastify opens, and then you hit record. Here you can see, whoops, here you can see the Google Meet extension, the, the grid view. So this will, what it looks like a Zoom call, so that when you have the Google Meet, the extension grid, you, the, your child can see everyone in the class. And here is my little picture of Otter. So it has like all of your conversations stored which is nice, um, and I don't have premium. So you get uh, 600 minutes per month, which is a lot more than like even I need when I record meetings and whatnot. Cami is the last one I wanted to talk about, and this was the annotation function that I discussed before. So what I did was I made an example here. So basically what your kids can do is highlight something, they can draw on it, and they can make a comment. So if they had any questions, they could put a comment on there for their teacher. Um, or you could put a comment, especially <laughs> I remember making a lot of comments on math sheets. So, um, you know, that might be helpful for you. Okay, so. Let's talk about, oops, cool co-curricular ideas for all pre-K to fibers. I think one of the most important things, and this is really helpful for, um, for parents, is to set up a Google Meet lunch table. So if your kid has a couple friends in their class, set up a time where they can have lunch together over a Google Meet. Now, if your kid's old enough, you can have them make their own lunch and then go to the meet, or you can help them make their lunch and then set it up with no more than four friends, because if it's more than four, it's just, it's just too many kids, but that way, your child will be able to sit there with their friends at their 
their virtual lunch table and eat their lunch and they're still socializing, which I think is great. Um, some other things I really like are the Explore live animal cams. Um, and, you know, they change throughout the season. In the spring, I looked at a hummingbird uh, nest, which was super cool. And now they're doing the, um, the bears with the Alaskan salmon, but they have all kinds of feeds, cats, sharks, uh, tigers, um, and they even work at night. I actually saw some uh, elephants at the watering hole at night through the night cam. It was pretty cool. Um, Cincinnati Zoo also has a great live feed on Facebook. I also get them on Instagram. Um, another thing that you can do is an indoor or outdoor scavenger hunt. I love these. You could like, you know, download one on Pinterest, but I think like sometimes what my favorite, like I'll just take like 10 of my kids, like, um, like action figures and just hide them around the house or puzzle pieces. Like they have those cute little Melissa and Doug puzzles. I would just take the pieces and hide them in a room or around the house. And especially for real little kids, like your pre-K to pre-K to like first grade, you know, they'll be really interested in trying to find all their action figures. And that might give you an extra 20 minutes or 30 minutes um, of them like doing something, but you might be able to get a couple emails out. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is Nat Geo. Nat Geo has so many great things, but I think a lot of kids these days are interested in like, you know, funny stuff and the weird but true is really, you know, interesting and unique. Uh, they have stuff like the world's biggest pizza in there, or uh, they talk about octopus ink, all kinds of like really <laughs> unique and interesting thing. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was Wide Open School is a great website. They have a lot of different ideas on there, uh, curricular ideas. Um, it's a great resource. And also use your library. I don't know if you feel comfortable going to the library or calling your library and asking for books to that you could take out. Um, but that's another great, of course, resource that you can use. Oh, I also wanted to mention there's another app called Literati, which they send you five books based on what your kid likes. And then you decide if you want to keep any of them and the ones you don't want, you send back and there's no shipping cost. And the cost of the books are about the same as Amazon. So, um, you know, it's really, it's pr really a good deal. And it's something that maybe your kid can look forward to. Okay, family wellness. I want to talk about HALT. It's actually a counseling technique, but I think it's applicable for everyone. It stands for hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I can't tell you how many times like my daughter is like freaking out and I realize I'm like, hmm, when was the last time you ate? A lot of times um, when our kids are acting out, it's because they're one of these things. And we have to remember that during COVID, we're still missing out on a lot of things. We're missing out on milestones and rituals that are, are important to, to us and our kids. Um, so it's important that we, you know, acknowledge their feelings and ours too. Um, some people have recommended to keep a family journal. Perhaps you can like write a, about your, um, about your experiences, your accomplishments, your feelings in the journal, and then you pass it to another family member. This might be hard with little kids, but um, it's something that you could also do together. Another thing I wanted to mention is create a gratitude box. Um, you can just use any box or you could like make it special, whatever you'd like. And you know, you can put, if your kids are really little on the paper, you can put like, I am grateful for, and they could fill it in. Or, um, you know, you could just you could just write on the slips. And what's great about it is it's nice at the end of the week or the month to sit there and say, wow, you know, mom was happy when I helped with when I helped her with the, you know, the, the dishes or, you know, I was really I was really glad when when dad and I went for a walk with the dog. You know, I'm just saying like because we we tend to um, look at on how to make things better and correct things. But a lot of times we don't always take the time to tell our kids or for our kids to tell us, especially if you have a teenager, <laughs> um, you know, what we're grateful for it. it, it it's a good, um, it's a good practice. 
So exercise and wellness. So of course, one of the things you wanna do is talk with your kids. Some kids don't always wanna talk. My one daughter is a vault. So I realize with her, if I wanna really talk to her, I have to be doing something with her, like a, a task or a project. Or sometimes you have to talk to your children when, when you're all in the car and they don't have to look at you, but what, whatever works, works. Um, if your kid is having a hard time coping, reach out to your school counselor. Most every district, even at uh, K to five has a school counselor. So connect with them, let them know what's going on with you, your family and your child. And you know, a lot of times they'll reach out and have a Google meet with them just to check in with them and see how they're doing um, because they wanna make sure that the kids are okay. Um, also, kids express themselves through journaling, art, music, and physical activity, which is something we need to keep in mind. I remember when the pandemic started, I said to my daughters, like, wow, this is an unprecedented time. Maybe you guys should start a journal. Uh, this would be really great. We could look back on it. That just wasn't their style. Like, my one daughter is really into art, and she made this beautiful art piece that, you know, represented how she felt about the time, which, which was great. And I was like, oh she didn't have to do the journal the art was fine and it was her way of expressing herself another thing is to connect with nature research shows being outside is one of the best ways to reduce stress and anxiety um, another thing i want to mention is for help with eye strain you could get blue light glasses from amazon they're about 20 bucks the jury's kind of out on whether or not they're really effective but i will say that my one friend got her son who's six the blue light glasses and when he put them on, he said, Mama, I can see. <laughs> so I guess um, they did help him. So let's talk about the apps that are great for exercise and wellness. Um, one of them is Cosmic Kids. Uh, even though I have the app pictured here, um, one of the best ways is to log on to YouTube and subscribe to the, um, the website. Uh, the woman's name is Jamie. She's like really fun and cool and she does like yoga in all these like virtual places. So kids really love her and they love like the little fun things she does. So I, I recommend Cosmic Kids. The other thing, Go Noodle, as I mentioned before, what's great about um, Go Noodle is they also have a meditation section where kids can meditate and unwind, they can do yoga. Um, and the last one I wanna mention is Headspace. I love Headspace. Um, it's very pricey. It's like 70 bucks, but I will say that some employers do uh, offer it through their wellness package. So you would be able to download it for free. Um, but even if you don't, if you just download the free version, there are still sleep casts on there. And I find the sleep casts really helpful. Um, when I have a hard time sleeping, I use the sleep cast and I would say nine, nine times out of 10, I fall to sleep or I fall back to sleep if I've woken up in the middle of the night. And they also do great little meditations for kids too, which are really, which are great. And they're like five minutes or less. So I recommend those. Just some other resources, common sense media. Uh, they are great because not only do they give you information on parental controls they, and safety tips, they also have a lot of great podcasts for kids that they can listen to. Um, and they also have book reviews. So if there's any TV show, book, um, movie that you're concerned about, whether it's the appropriate age for your child, you can look that up. But like I said, they also have these great things like podcasts. Um, and the last one is PBS not PBS, ki the kids, the, ga the game one, the regular PBS. Um, and they have a lot of great videos and um, helpful things for you during homeschooling. And that's it, I wanted to open it up to your questions. I was curious if you, if you wanted to share your experience or you had any questions that um, 